Grace and peace to all the beloved brethren. I'm convinced there's only one gospel unto salvation, and I pray that you are too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Belief is All. I've been in and around the Free Grace community for about eight months now, and I'm ready to begin spreading the gospel. I believe there's a spell that's bewitched a lot of self-proclaimed Christian people, and it's my and my fellowship's mission to get them to repent properly. What do I mean by repent properly? Well, let's hear the word of God, and we'll get into it. John 3.16 is the most famous line of scripture ever, and it's because it's the embodiment of the gospel message. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Notice what that doesn't say. It doesn't say that whoever abstains from sin shall not perish. It doesn't say that those who stop their worldly ways shall not perish. It's simply not there. This is because the gospel is the good news that anyone that believes that Jesus came, died, rose, and paid it all will be saved. In fact, I'll triple down on this point by letting you in on an open secret. You won't find a verse in the Bible where repentance is of sins. That's because repentance is a changing of the mind. And in the context of the true gospel, this is a changing of the mind from our filthy way to the way of God. Now, I know that there are some who heard that last sentence and instantly puffed their chest saying, the way of God is to be sinless. Since this is my first video and potentially your first time hearing the gospel, I'm going to be nice and lay it out for you. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's will is that all should repent, a.k.a. change their mind, so that they will not perish, a.k.a. not fall away from everlasting life. So the way of God is to be saved, and the way to be saved is to believe. John 3.16 is not the only verse that affirms this either. Acts 16.31, the prison guard asked Paul and Silas how to be saved. Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Why would Paul, writer of half the New Testament, not tell this man to keep the law and be a workman if it was required. That would make him a lazy teacher, in my opinion. In Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, specifically puts rest law keeping, aka working, with this. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Very self-explanatory and all the more damning toward anyone with a lordship complex or a super pronomian. And if you can believe it, there's even more scriptures you can hear that drive home the point. Here's a list. Research these on your own time. Romans 6.14, Romans 3.24, Titus 2.11, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, Acts 20 and 24, and Galatians 5 and 4. That's nine verses I've given you confirming belief unto salvation. That's nine more than you'll find for the popular and wrong repent of your sins gospel. This is a corruption that I hope to expose as I make more videos. Lord willing, we will discuss more soon. But to wrap this one up, I beseech those that are of no faith, other faith, or who think they're Christian because they abstain from sin, your works won't save you. They are a filthy rag before God. This is Isaiah 64 and 6, by the way. There's nothing you can do to save yourself any more than simply believing in what Christ did and who he is. So rest in his grace and truly be born again. Accept free grace first, then we can discuss how to live later. If you accept that today, then welcome to the fellowship. You are brothers and sisters in Christ and I love you. I've got videos from other beloved brothers in the description to help you to begin your journey and explain being saved by grace. Lastly... Well, to the no-faithers and other-faithers that don't accept this, you're pretty much damned. I mean, there, there's not much to say. I wipe you off as the dust of my feet. But to you that would claim to be under God and boast in your righteousness, affiliations, and extra-biblical text, you that would turn the grace of God into a license to sin and a lie to be mocked due to your cultural comfortability and your lack of spiritual fortitude, you remind me of the Galatians. I'd listen up and meditate on the verses I provided. Depart from me, I never knew you. That verse wasn't for what you think is a weak Christian. That verse was for you. Lock in and accept the true gospel, the one that was from the very beginning. I'm convinced that there is one gospel unto salvation, and I pray that after this, you are too.
to my beloved brethren, grace and peace. God bless.